Cytomel is a replacement for free T3, exactly. Thank you. It does really work. So the things that we test for, there's no real standard lab test to adequately measure the severity of illness or degree of limitation. Is that really true? Now that's the traditional statement that I wrote, that I write, is it really true? No, it isn't really true because when we do a complete battery of labs, which is probably 12 to 15 vials of blood that we look for because we're looking at all the possibilities that can be causing these type of syndromes that people have. So groups of fibromyalgia patients and chronic fatigue patients tend to show more lab abnormalities than do groups of controls. That means people that don't have that syndrome. Is this part of the path to the cure that is overlooked by most doctors? And yes, it is. So unfortunately, the way medicine is going, your traditional doctors, your primary treating physicians do not have the time, nor do they have the knowledge, or do they have the desire to dig deep. And that's what we do at our clinic. We're diggers. We want to find out what is going on biochemically with people that have these type of syndromes and then be able to get, it might just be one little thing that we find that may be the key, maybe six or seven. So the problem, fibromyalgia is a diagnosis of exclusion. Fibromyalgia symptoms are vague and overlap with many other possible disease processes. Clinical uncertainty is inescapable. So the traditional format is we don't know what it is, we're going to call it fibromyalgia, and you're not going to get better. That's basically it. We're going to drug you up, and hopefully that's going to sedate you, and you won't mind having it. So I already diagnosed myself on the Internet. I either have three left kidneys, recurring puberty, or Dutch elm disease. I mean, it's funny, but that's, that's traditional medicine for me when it comes to fibromyalgia. I just I detest it. Fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, anywhere from 35 to 70 percent overlap. Why would there be some studies that show 35 and some show 70? Because they're all looking at different things. It's so confusing. Fibromyalgia and irritable bowel syndrome, 32 percent to 80 percent of people have both of those. That's crazy. Chronic fatigue syndrome and irritable bowel syndrome, 58 to 92 fibromyalgia and chemical sensitivity, multi-chemical sensitivity, is that right? Yeah. 33 to 55, and then 30 to 67. This right here, you may as well just forget about it. It means the doctors don't know what they're doing. Multiple chemical sensitivity. Anyone have any of these? Burning, stinging eyes, wheezing, breathlessness, nausea, fatigue, lethar lethargy, headaches, poor memory, concentration, runny nose, sore throat, sinus problems, skin rashes, itching skin, Sensitivity, light and noise, sleeping problems, digestive upset, muscle and joint pain. Raise your hand. Okay. Anyone ever walk into a room where someone's wearing cologne or perfume and you get sick? You get some of these symptoms? I do. We used to have a sign in our office that said no perfume. I don't know if we still have it. But uh, it's important with patients who come to us because the people that come to us are very sensitive people. And if someone comes in with different odors, even smoke, it can be anything, other people in the office will get sick. They'll get a headache. They'll start sneezing, something like that. We have a very sensitive group of people that come to us. Chronic fatigue syndrome, how is it defined in traditional medicine? Debilitating complex disorder, that's the word, complex. Characterized by profound fatigue that is not improved by bed rest, may be worsened by physical or mental activity. It sounds like fibromyalgia too, doesn't it? It just didn't mention the pain part of it. People with CS, CFS most often function at a substantially lower level of activity than they were capable of before the onset of illness. Is it an illness is the question. I'm not so sure it is because it's usually something we can pick up and be able to change with the processes that we do and often the supplements that we're taught about from Christiana. So very often we can tune up the body so it's not really a disease. Now this is kind of funny. You see a guy here sitting at his computer, his keyboard's up here, then you have one of his buddies here saying, uh, suspending your keyboard from the ceiling forces you to sit up straight, thus reducing fatigue. <laughs> Probably true, right? Anything you do that's a little different is going to make you a little more alert, stretch your body. Um, so we see a lot of people that come in with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, any of these syndromes, who come in with a book of about 1,500 pages of doctors and lab tests that they've seen all over the world because they haven't gotten down to the basics of what is their issue. And sometimes it's hard to find. Sometimes 
This is the key for someone. Irritable bowel syndrome, what is this called in traditional medicine? How do we define it? Benign GI disorder. What does that mean? Benign means it's, it's not going to hurt anybody, really. It's just some kind of symptoms. person has mild stomach complaints, maybe bloating, gas, pain, whatever that is. Chronic abdominal pain. We always have to be careful with this because, unfortunately, when someone has a diffuse abdominal pain that cannot be tracked to something after a workup is done, there is a high probability of a type of cancer called pancreatic cancer that we look for. Uh, has anyone ever had a friend who died from pancreatic cancer? Usually hits around the age of 60. And uh, it's talked about as being a cancer that kills people very quickly. It's not true. What it does is takes forever to diagnose. So very often doctors are checking CT scans and checking other things in the abdominal area. They don't see anything. And then maybe another doctor look at the CT and go, well, that might be pancreatic cancer. By the time it is found, a person usually lives about a year. So when we're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or any GI complaints, I always am on the cautious side. I err on the side of caution. I make sure the person gets worked up by a regular GI doctor. And then after that's clear, I'll take over. Altered bowel habits, people usually have uh, episodes of diarrhea and then constipation, flips back and forth. Absence of organic causes, meaning that there's no real disease going on. Organic meaning an actual disease process. Typically people get, you know, dyspepsia, nausea, bloating, gas, atypical chest pain, meaning that it's not the type of chest pain that people get from exercise or going uh, to a certain area like down the left arm or to the jaw. Symptoms worse, obviously, during stressful times. And then again, normal examination. So what do we keep hearing with all these things? Normal examination. OK, so what do doctors do? Anyone been put on fiber for any stomach complaints? Yeah, it's kind of funny, isn't it? And this says, try eating more fiber. If that doesn't work, try eating less fiber. And that's really what a lot of docs will do. They don't really know what to do with this. What do we do? We'll get a stool sample. We're not going to send it to Quest Diagnostics that takes two seconds to look for bugs. We're going to, and it's very inexpensive. We're going to send it to somewhere that uh, really does a job and spends hours and will find things. We often will find things like candida. You've heard of candida, a fungus, a yeast? Yes, no? Yes. Most people have a fairly severe overgrowth of it because of the antibiotics we've taken that kill off all the bacteria and then allow the yeast mm -hmm. to overgrow. And it's very tough to get rid of. So why is fibro tough to heal? We already know the answer. It's tough to find out what's going on. The look-alikes are endless. What is the diagnosis? So I don't know if, can people read this? I don't want to read, I don't want to read all that, it's a lot. Um, I just went through my head and just kind of went through all the different things that people have had that I've seen. And uh, it could be any of this huge list of things from HIV, you know, AIDS, to uh, root canals can do it because people when they have root canal often have a chronic infection that can cause these type of syndromes because there's a chronic infection which causes chronic fatigue and it can cause pain in the body. Hepatitis C. What about Gulf War syndrome? Anyone know what that is? Remember the guys that went to war? They came back with this strange achiness, fatigue. And in my day, back in the Vietnam days, it was Agent Orange. Um, sometimes PMS can look like it. I've had plenty of women come in that are destroyed by severe PMS syndromes where they're ready to shoot the brains out unless I give them a big dose of progesterone, they'll stop their period. You might go, well, why would you want to stop their period? Because if they have a period, they're ready to kill themselves. It's that painful. It's that crampy and all that. Endometriosis can look like this, too. Um, heavy metals, that's a big issue. Lyme disease. How many people in this room think they might have Lyme disease? Probably three quarters of the people who have Lyme disease have been affected by it. My sister's going, huh? It's not, it's not uh, it doesn't show up in most people as a problem, but it's in most people's blood that we check. I've had one person so far that I've checked that I thought had, quote, fibromyalgia type symptoms, um, who I checked for Lyme who did not have it. 